Hey, what's up, users? This is John at muse for you here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to go over the new update to the responsive image and video slider widget. Um, it is now the responsive image and video slider uh, 1.1. Um, so I'll go ahead and go to the widget page. So here I'll just go to museforyoushop.com and then here I'll click on the pop up. And here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, if you are a subscriber and you need your login info emailed to you, uh, you can just click here and have the login info uh, emailed uh, to you. So the only widget that is not in the subscription is the Muse Morph widget, uh, SVG Morphing, uh, because it is powered by Greensock's Morph SVG plugin technology. Uh, so this is a standalone widget. Um, so right here we have the image and video slider. And here if you'd like to if you'd like to purchase the widget individually, uh, you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Um, and right down here we have the updates. So I'm going to go over uh, each of these updates. It's going to be a fairly quick uh, tutorial, but I'll go over each of these updates one by one. Uh, the first update is the ability to add a fixed height to the images in the slideshow. Uh, so I'll go ahead and open up Adobe Muse. I'll go to the library panel. And another update is that I've added an abbreviation to the widget, which is RIVS, or you can just type in RIVS. And um, you can bring in the image, the responsive image and video slider widget here. Uh, so it's just easier to access within the library panel. Uh, so here I'll click, hold, and drag and place into Adobe Muse. And here we have the widget. And I'll just close the library panel. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to Window and click on Library to bring up the library panel. Uh, now the first thing I want to do is set the slider to 100% width. So I'll just click on the widget, I'll go to the Resize option, and say Stretch to Browser Width. Uh, now the fixed height has been requested quite a bit, and I'm really happy uh, to introduce it in this new update. Um, if we go to Images, we now have this new section here. We have Image Width, Image Height, and you can set this to anything. Uh, image fitting, we can say cover, which will cover the entire width of the slider, or we can say contain, which would contain the entire image in the slider, and I'll showcase this. Uh, we have image vertical position and image horizontal position. Uh, so I'm going to add four images just to showcase it a bit better. So here I'll just add a few images. So there we have four images. And because for each of the breakpoints, we only have one item, we only have one image in the slider. So from 0 to 600, we have one item. 600 to 900, we have one item. 900 to 1200, one item. And 1200, 1200 and up is one item. Um, so if I preview this in the browser, and we have the slider here, if I resize the browser, um, it's just one item across the entire uh, browser. And as we can see, if I click on Next, we just have one image. And it's at a fixed uh, height of 300 pixels, so it doesn't change from 300 pixels in height. Um, if I did want to change the height, I could just go in here, and for the image height, I could say 400, and it'll make the slider a bit bigger, just like that. So now we have uh, a 400 pixels in height slider. Looks great. And the other thing we can say cover or contain here, if I hit say contain, it's going to contain the entire image within um, within the size of the, the slider. So the entire image will fit in the slider, just like so. And it'll still retain the 400 pixels in height there. OK, so there we have uh, the, the fixed image height. And I did go over the abbreviation as well, which was another update. So if I go back into here, into the widget page, uh, the next update is ability to position single images within the slideshow. So if I go back into the images and I say cover, um, now it'll cover the entire slider. And then for the image vertical position, I'll say zero. So it starts at the top of the image. So now the starting position is all the way at the top. If I say 100 for the vertical position, it'll be more towards the bottom of the image. So you can reposition uh, the image like that. Uh, if it's 100% width, then only the vertical position will work because it's not going to move left and right within the uh, image. So there we just changed the position of the, the single image here. 
Okay, so that was the second update. Uh, there's now the ability to disable the mouse wheel over the slideshow, uh, and this was also quite a big uh, request. Um, if you go to additional options, we can see this option mouse wheel. It's unchecked, so when the user is viewing the slider and you scroll your mouse with the mouse wheel, it doesn't. Uh, the slider doesn't change. Uh, so that was quite a big request because you know as the user was scrolling through the website and they would hover their mouse over the slider, the slider would change scroll, would change uh, images, and that wasn't that fun because you know it would kind of throw off the, the slider a little bit because the user would just hover and the images would slide. So that has been fixed. You can en enable it or disable it. So if I enable it and I preview in the browser, we can see if I scroll my mouse, the images change just like that. All right, so I'll uncheck that because I do like it um, when I don't use the mouse wheel and it just stays in place, but you might want to allow mouse wheel um, sliding controls there. Um, so I'll go to the next update. Animations are now included within the widget and you, do not, and you do not need to add the animator widget to use the animations. So I'll go into the slider again and here in animation, um, let's say for the fade out, I'll say, we'll say like uh, flip, flip out uh, Y. And for the animate in and animate out options, I do recommend um, using in and out animations. For So for animate in, we can see we have fade in. For animate out, we have flip out. So animations that have the word out in them are best for animation out. And animations that have the word in in them are best for animation in. And I find that, you know, either having a fade in and then just a interesting fade out animation works really well. Some animations don't work that great together. Uh, so you'll just have to play and see, you know, how, you know, what animations work, work well together. Um, so I'll preview in the browser. I'll click next. And we can see we have this nice flip out Y effect looks great and you don't need to add the animator widget uh, in, in the previous version you did but in this version uh, you do not need to add the animator widget and I've added some notes here in the widget so for a few of these options the there's notes to reference so for easy yeah for easy reference on how to use the widget all right so I'll go to the next uh, update uh, fixed Vimeo poster image not showing um, I'm actually going to create a new site so we can see the video uh, the video one or the video slider. So I'll type in RIVS and I'll bring in the YouTube and Vimeo video slider. Just like that. And I'll stretch to browser width. And I'll just grab a Vimeo video really quick. Okay, so I just grabbed the link for a Vimeo video. So I'll go into the widget. And for videos for the second video, um, I will do, I'll do it for the fifth video here. And then I'll just add five images, or five videos, excuse me. And then I'll just go to file, preview, page, and browser and we'll go to the fifth video and now we have the Vimeo poster image. If I click play, we have a Vimeo video playing. All right, so now the poster image does show for Vimeo videos. All right, so I'll go to the next update. Um, there is, yeah, the ability to open links in a new tab uh, when linking images. So here I'm on the, let me go to the images section. Um, or the image slider. If I go to images and we'll add a link to the first image, we'll say muse for you shop. Yeah, muse for you shop.com. Enter and then I'll click here, open link and new page. And I'll go to, I'll preview this in the browser. And if I click on the image, we can see that it opens in a new tab. So we have the image here and it opens in a new tab. So you can have it open in the same page or um, in a new in a new page. So here I have it open in, opening in the same uh, page. So here we can see it opened in the same page. Um, so that's just an option when linking images. You can now uh, open in a new tab or page or just open it in the same uh, the same page. All right. So I'll go here uh, to the updates. Um, we have abbreviated widget names for easier access when searching in the library panel. So I went over that. Um, the abbreviated name is RIVS. So you can just type that in the library panel and it'll show up in the library panel. And there's instructions included within the widget for easy reference on how to use the widget. So just in, the, in a few of the sections, you know, we have like autoplay slide speed must be less than autoplay speed. 
Um, to change the slide speed for breakpoints with a single item, use the animation duration option in the animation section. And then here, animation is for one item in breakpoint, and recommended to use a fade in animation for animate in, and a fade, a fade out animation for animate out. Um, and then, yeah, there's a few other ones here. Um, I've added how to link items, so linking internal pages, um, dot backslash page name dot HTML, linking external pages. Here we have a URL, museforyoushop.com, or yeah, HTTP uh, colon backslash backslash museforyoushop.com, and linking anchor points is hashtag in the name of the anchor, um, and no no capitals for anchor points or um, or page names either. You don't need capitals. Um, so that's basically it, and I will go will go over the breakpoint section. Um, if you didn't see the first video, uh, here you can add breakpoints here from 0 to 600. Um, you can change these breakpoint properties. So you can have uh, up to four different breakpoints. And in between each of these breakpoints um, is how many items you want within that breakpoint. So if I say three for each of them, we'll have three images in the slider. And we'll take a look. And there we have three images in the slider at one time. Um, let's say on one breakpoint, uh, I just wanted one image. So from 600 to 900, um, I'll just have I'll just say one item, and I'll preview in the browser. And if I shrink the browser, here we can see we just have one item. If I make it larger, we have three items. So on the breakpoint from 600 to 900 is one item, uh, 900 to 1200 is three items, and 1200 and up. Is three items as well so you can change the items within the different in between the different breakpoints and change the breakpoint numbers here um, you can change them to match the breakpoints in your website so it's really flexible um, and it works really well with breakpoints even if you add breakpoints here um, these breakpoints don't necessarily affect the breakpoints in the widget but you can match it just to keep it all cohesive so as we can see it has its own breakpoint properties uh, within the widget and it does well work well when you add breakpoints in Adobe Muse as well um, so it doesn't you know really affect anything in the widget so that's that's uh, great there and if you have just you know one full or yeah if you have it at 100% width um, then if you resize the browser the slider will just change um, depending on how many items you have here within the breakpoint um, if you have any questions about that let me know in the comment section um, basically it's just you know how many items you want in between these breakpoints here. So six, you know, zero, uh, 600, 900, and 1200. Um, yep, so that's it for the responsive breakpoints. Um, and I will say for the slide speed, uh, most of this corresponds with if you have more than one item in the slider. So the autoplay speed, that works across the board for one item, or if you have multiple items. The autoplay slide speed, that's if you have multiple items. Um, that's just how long it takes for the slider to drag. So. Um, as an example, um, if we go and preview this in the browser, so if I hit next, it takes one second for it to go to the next slide because in the slide speed, we have it set to one second. If I were to say to 3000 or set it to 3000 for the navigation slide speed and the dot slide speed, um, it'll go slower and even the drag slide speed. and we preview, if I click next, it now takes three seconds for the slider to go to the next item. And if in the dot, the same thing. And if I drag, the same thing. It takes three seconds for it to finish kind of sliding through the uh, slider there. And then the auto plays every five seconds. Um, and the auto play slide speed does have to be less than the auto play uh, speed. So the auto play speed is how long it takes for it to get to the next, uh, or to go to the next slide. And the autoplay slide speed is how long it takes the slider to actually move to the next slide. Um, for a single item uh, image or a single yeah a single item in the breakpoint, you'd want to use the animation duration to change um, how quickly the the uh, image or item transitions into the next one. So if I were to change this to three uh, seconds, which uh, it's milliseconds, so three thousand milliseconds is is three seconds, and I preview in the browser. And I'll just go to that single breakpoint. So it's going to autoplay every five seconds, and it's going to take three seconds for it to do the animation. So we saw that flip out Y was a bit slower. It takes three seconds for the animation duration. Uh, so the multiple items on on the breakpoint um, works a little differently with the slide speeds. 
And if you're using just one item on the breakpoint, I'd recommend using the animation duration. Um, and the animation is only for one item within the breakpoint, or in this case, one image, or if you just have one video. Uh, so this does work for images and videos as well. Um, so that's basically it. You know, you can have, you know, different items on the breakpoint. You could have one item and just have a nice slider with different images or videos. And now with the with the I'll go back here with the fixed height, it works really well. Um, before in the previous one, it was more you know working with the images and percentages, but you you can now set a fixed height that will stay fixed across all of the breakpoints and the website. So that's a really great uh, feature that was updated. And I know this has been requested a lot, so I'm really happy to have added this update. Uh, so that's it for the updates for the responsive image and video slider. Um, I think I covered uh, pretty much all the points here. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. And there's also a community section here within the widget page if you have any questions. Um, so again, I'll go over the updates. Um, the responsive image and video slider 1.1. There is now the ability to add a fixed height to the images, images in the slideshow. There's the ability to position single images within the slideshow. There's the ability to disable the mouse wheel over the slideshow. Animations are now included within the widget and you do not need to add the animator widget to use the animations. The Vimeo poster image was fixed. Um, yeah, so the Vimeo Im uh, image now, the Vimeo poster image now shows. Uh, there's the ability to open links in a new tab when linking, linking images. There's updated code within the widget. There's abbreviated widget names for widget names for easier access when searching in the library panel. And there's instructions and instructions included within the widget for easy reference on how to use the widget. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial and uh, the update to the responsive image and video slider. Um, it is now Im responsive image and video slider 1.1. Um, so to access this widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click on the pop-up. And here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to use PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Um, if you are a subscriber and you need your login info, you can click here and have your login info emailed to you so you can access the subscription. Um, and then the only widget that is not in the subscription is the Muse Morph SVG Morphing widget uh, because it is powered by GreenSox Morph SVG plugin technology, so it is a standalone widget. Um, and then we have the, Im the responsive image and video slider here. Uh, so we'll click here and here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, there's a few other videos here. There's the community section. There's widget options here you can take a look at. Um, and here are the features included within the widget and the change log that we just went over uh, in this video tutorial. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.